Howdy, 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 everyone. Pastor Ben Hosh here again, coming to you from video and uh, maybe a time warp. I, I don't quite know because uh, at the time you have this recording, I am uh, thousands of feet in the air traveling to, uh, well, I can't tell you that. I'm traveling to, to somewhere. Uh, you have to guess, right? You have to guess where in the world I am. Where in the world is Pastor Ben Hosh? Right, Carmen San Diego. You probably don't. Just like Bette Midler, you don't know who Carmen San Diego is. Uh, again, go ask your parents. Um, next week, I will be coming to you from another country, uh, and you have to guess where in the world I am. And uh, I'm going to give you a hint right now because I know some of you uh, think you know where I'm going to be. I'm going to give you a hint right now, and I'm going to tell you it is not Taiwan. I'm not going to be in Taiwan, uh, but I'll try and leave you some other hints. Uh, and uh, Rob is going to pass around note cards on that night. You write down, write your name, write where you think that I am based on the hints that I give you. Um, and uh, if you win, I have a special prize from that country uh, to give to you. So I hope I hope somebody wins. Somebody better win. Somebody better figure out uh, where I am. Uh, again, I'm trying to track uh, where you guys are going, and I hear there's a lot of good conversations going on, uh, a lot of digging through the Bible to see what it has to say, and thinking about uh, some of these things. Talking about, okay, predestination and election. Man, those are big topics. Um, they're kind of confusing topics, and maybe they're hard topics to swallow. Maybe some of you are like, I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like that the Bible says that. And uh, let me just tell you right now, if you are like that, right, you don't have to raise your hand. If you are like that, if you kind of read that and you're like, God, that's hard to swallow. I don't know. How can that be true? Uh, I get it. I completely get it. 100%. I know where you're coming from because I was in the same boat as you. And I want to start, before I get into my old dead guy, all right, I want to start uh, by laying something out a little bit. Maybe this will help you, maybe not. Um, start with this thought. The Bible doesn't care if you like what it has to say or not. Simple as that. The Bible doesn't care if you like what it has to say or not. It says what it says because it's God's word, and you either accept it uh, or you reject it. And as a pastor, as somebody who uh, preaches, uh, reads biblical passages to bring the truth uh, to my congregation each and every Sunday, uh, there's passages I read where I don't like what I read, uh, where I don't want to agree with what it says. But if I believe it's God's word, I have to. Um, I have to see that the Bible says predestination 39 times, and I can't turn that into free will just because I don't like the word predestination. Um, I just have to accept it. Uh, so my old dead guy this week is a man by the name of uh, Leslie Newbegin. Yes, he is a man. Okay, uh, Leslie Newbegin died in 1998. Oh my goodness. Well, next week's old dead guy also died in 1998. I don't know what's going on with that. I just saw this on the back right here. Leslie Newbegin died not all that long ago. Leslie Newbegin uh, was from England. He was an Anglican, uh, spent the majority of his life. Uh, he never married, never had any kids. Uh, he spent the majority of his life as a missionary in the country of India. And he came back. He retired from the missionary work. He came back to England and uh, looked at the state of uh, the culture around him, the society around him, and thought, uh, hey, churches need to do, in England, in the Western world, exactly the same things I was doing in India. Churches have to be uh, like missionaries, uh, have to be missionary centers now. That's the way it works. That's the way the world's going. He felt like he never... Uh, came back, left the mission field to come back home. He just came back to another uh, mission field. So I, I am eating up Leslie Newbegin. He's important. If your pastor's not reading Leslie Newbegin, uh, he's missing out. Uh, he really needs to. This needs to be like 
uh, required reading for like every seminary student, every uh, college student who calls himself a Christian, uh, the gospel in a pluralist society, uh, required reading. Uh, there's a chapter that Leslie Newbegin has in his book that's called The Logic of Election. Again, dealing with those tough uh, topics, that big topic of election, predestination. And he starts by saying this way, There is surely no part of Christian teaching which has been the subject of so much ridicule and indignant rejection. There's no, no teaching, uh, no part of Christian teaching that has been so rejected as the doctrine of election. He says, How absurd for intelligent, educated people to believe that Almighty God should have his favorites, that he should pick out of one small tribe among all the families of humankind to be the special objects of his attention. Is it not simply a piece of ignorant egotism? Oh, those are some big words. What Leslie Newbegin is really saying, people look at this and say, how egotistical of God that he doesn't leave it up to our free will, that he just uh, picks us, right? Picks us, chooses us, right? And that's what uh, the Western world wants to think. The philosophical mind wants to think, right? I, I, I talked about Philip Melanchthon a little bit, who says that the idea of free will doesn't come from the Bible. It comes from philosophy, uh, which he studied rather intently, right? People with that kind of a mindset, the Western kind of thinking mindset, Want, we want to elevate our free will and think, well, God gives us uh, the freedom to choose, right? The uh, Declaration of Independence. All men are created uh, equal. Are they really? Did Thomas Jefferson get that from the Bible? Well, I'll give you a little clue. Uh, Thomas Jefferson did not believe in the God of the Bible. So uh, that takes care of that right there. So Leslie Newbegin goes on, right? That people reject this doctrine, this teaching, and he says, and yet it is plain that the doctrine of election is central to any true exposition of the Bible. It's central. The doctrine of election is central. We can't throw it out. Uh, we can't change it, rewrite it. It's central to what the Bible teaches. For us to understand the Bible, we need to understand this teaching. At least wrestle with it, grapple with it, uh, work it out. Right? It's important for us. Uh, so he says, uh, over here now, the first step toward an answer to these questions is to ask what assumptions lie behind them. So the people that question election want to throw it out. Uh, the first step to an answer is, uh, to these questions is to ask what assumptions, what, what, what's in people's mind that lies behind this that they want to just get rid of it or rewrite it or, or think about it differently? What is implied in the complaint that I ought not to have to depend on another for that which is necessary for my salvation? Now that is a big Loaded sentence, I'm going to break it down just a little bit. Uh, what's the, the question really behind it is, uh, the thought that's really behind it is, why do people throw out election? Why do they throw out uh, predestination? In the back of their mind, it's because uh, they can't believe, they can't believe that God would leave salvation out of our hands. They have to think that God gives us a choice, uh, that we have free will, uh, that kind of a thing, they, they just can't accept it. Um, but again, if we look at the Bible, what it has to say about uh, who we are and about our will, that our heart is desperately sick and wicked, uh, what choice does God have other than just grab us and uh, pull us out of the water? Right? We've been thinking about uh, these different uh different ways of thinking about God and salvation. Uh, and again, I think kind of in images, um, and I'm going to put it out there in this way, that uh, Pelagianism is really kind of like this. You're just floating along in the water. you got your little floaties on, right? Um, you got your little floaties on. The lifeguard says, well, you can come out if you want. <laughs> you can come out if you want to, but you're doing okay. All right, I'll come out when I'm ready. I'll do it in my own time. I got my floaties on. I'm doing okay. Uh, I think synergism makes it uh, a little bit different. Things are starting to get a little more bumpy. Maybe you don't have the floaties. Uh, you can you can make it, right? And still the lifeguard on the ends uh, is really kind of like, if you want to come to safety, you're going to have to swim. Uh, you're going to have to swim to me. You're going to have to get here on your own. 
Now, monergism is, is more or less like this. Uh, you don't have floaties on. You're just face down in the water. You are dead. And the lifeguard comes and grabs you and starts CPR, like, right away. Right? That's the difference here. What does the Bible have to say about us? Uh, do we have our floaties on and we can just kind of hang around and come when we're ready? I don't think the Bible presents that as all. The, the Bible's pretty clear. Now is the day of salvation. Let's get it done, right? Don't wait around. Uh, synergism, maybe a little more. The Bible still doesn't say, try the best you can, just swim, 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 and come, come over here and get here, all right? The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the gift is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Bible says you were dead in your transgressions and sins, right? And it is by grace you have been saved uh, through faith, right? We have to think about that. The doctrine of election, the predestination, this thing is central, Leslie Newbegin says. And what assumptions lie behind the people that want to reject it? It's that I want a hand to my salvation. I want to stake a claim in that I am saved, right? I want to have a choice. And so I'd rather not believe that God uh, does everything. So that's my old dead guy for the night, Leslie Newbegin, the gospel in a pluralist society. Uh, when you're in college, remember this in the back of your brain and your subconscious. Pastor Ben said, uh, read this book. So find it and read it. I hope you have a good night. Uh, next week, coming to you from somewhere else. You got to guess what I am. Prizes are at stake. Uh, have a good night, and we'll see you in person very soon, like three weeks.